<laughs> Welcome, distinguished guest. It is I, the great Mortalex. But you, you can call me Mort. I will show you grace. By granting you death. Dragon Husbando, let's go. Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. We have a new hero today, Mort. I'm very excited to talk about him. Before we get into that though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, as always, check the video description below for a link to my Discord. Okay, so Mort. He is a pretty badass looking Earth Knight. Not sure why he's Earth. I think he would fit better if he was ice or water or whatever the blue one is. Anyways, he's a Earth Knight. Uh, he's a Gemini, so that's the same star sign as Charles. We can see his stats here, uh, pretty bad attack, but he is a knight. He has uh, you know, decent health, good speed, uh, decent defense, and most importantly, he has a ton of crit chance. Um, so he's getting some of his crit chance from awakenings, we can see here. And then his two imprints, uh, he can give two people attack, or he can have a crit chance on the imprint concentration. And crit chance is probably the second best imprint concentration in the game, speed obviously being you know the best one. Different units want these things though, so for a you know a bruiser or something like that, imprint concentration of crit chance is going to be just amazing. And uh, getting all of that plus his awakenings here means I think he's going to be fairly easy to build. He does not have any effectiveness or effect resistance. So overall, I really like the stat line uh, for Mort. We can go ahead and take a look at the skills. Skill 3 is Advent Mortelix, so this is an AoE ability, it inflicts injuries on the enemy team. This is a new unique ability for a hero, we don't have anyone who can do injury yet. This is going to be the same thing as the injury set, it's going to lower the max health of people on the enemy team. Looks like it also gives him a rage buff for 2 turns and it recovers his health, so just like Adventure Rasses S3. The damage dealt and the amount recovered is proportional to the caster's max health, so this is an HP scaling bruiser. They're very strong, although granted a little less strong with the new frenzy changes. We still don't know if those are going to be permanent or not. The severity of injuries increases proportional to the damage dealt. Okay, so the more damage he deals, the greater the injury, or the greater you reduce their max health. And it looks like that caps out at 15%. So it's not clear here based on this description whether you need to do 15% of their health to max this out, or if it's some arbitrary number, you know, they just say the severity of injuries increases proportional to damage dealt. You know, do you just have to do 2,000 damage and then you get the 15% reduction, or do you have to do enough damage to, you know, have done 15% of damage to them? It's kind of hard to say, we don't know. Uh, looks like it's a five turn cooldown, and that brings it, brings it down to uh, four when you mola it. Soul burning increases the damage, and it's only 10, so that's important to note. You know, 10 soul burn abilities are pretty easy to pull off. And then the Rage here, this is the buff he gets for two turns after he uses his skill 3, increases his attack and speed by 10%, and Rage cannot be dispelled. So once you've mulled this, he'll be with Rage about half the time after you skill 3. You know, he'll have it for two turns, then he won't have it for two, and then he'll get it again. Kind of flip-flop back and forth. Overall, it seems like a fairly solid skill. I don't remember exactly how much the injury set is on each hit, it's definitely not 15%. 15% is a good chunk. Four turns is a fairly long cooldown, but it's short enough that I think you can realistically do it twice in a drawn out fight. So that's going to be like 30% knocked off of their max HP. Uh, that'll be interesting. I haven't really run into anybody using the injury set, so I don't really know how it scales with Frenzy either. I mean, it's always going to be 30%, I suppose. But I'm not sure if, in the way Frenzy works, if it becomes stronger later in Frenzy or weaker. I just don't have experience with that yet. The Rage buff giving him increased attack is a little odd, given that he is uh, HP scaling here. My only thought is maybe it's a little bit of protection for the new Frenzy changes, because the Frenzy changes increase your attack as Frenzy goes on. So this would kind of like stack well with that, I suppose but his base attack is also really low. You know, I mean, you think about Charles, how hard it is just to get 3k attack on Charles. I can't imagine that you're going to be building a ton of attack on Mort. Could be wrong, but we'll see. 
Uh, overall, a very interesting skill three. Extermination, this is the skill one. It's a single target attack, 40% chance to decrease defense for two turns. Two turns is really important here. One turn defense breaks are pretty ineffective simply because when the defense break is applied, a good percentage of the time, the unit you just def broke is towards the top of the CR bar and they just take a turn and the defense break goes away. If it's two turns, you know, everyone's gonna cycle around and have a chance to take advantage of it. So two, two turns is way stronger. Uh, it looks like this ignores effect resistance when the caster's enraged. That's very strong. You know, the ability to defense break a high ER unit like Ruel early on in a fight can be game breaking. And it can really like, you can force a cleanse, you know, or like her S2 or something like that just to prevent her from dying. So that's very strong. It is only 40% though. Looks like you get another 10%, so it'll go up to 50% once you mull of this. So kind of a coin flip if you get this or not, but very strong though. The new frenzy changes mean this will be a little bit less impressive later on in frenzy. We don't know if those are permanent though. Overall, a pretty powerful skill one. Very interesting. This ignore effect resistance, I think, is going to be very scary. You know, if you're on the field and the opponent has Mort, you know, you're just going to be like praying that he doesn't, you know, win the coin flip. So more, more RNG is definitely what we needed in this game. Skill two is absolute dignity. So it looks like he is just innately immune to stun and sleep. That's incredibly strong. If the caster inflicts a critical hit when using a basic attack, has a 30% chance to activate Sacred Blessing, can be activated once every two turns. What does Sacred Blessing do? Increases critical hit resistance of all allies for one turn, and increases speed of the caster for two turns. Hmm. So his skill three gives him Rage, which gives him a 10% speed increase, and then this gives him the speed buff for two turns when it procs. Uh, looks like it's a 30% chance, and then you get another 10% down here, so 40% chance. So these are very powerful abilities, but they're all kind of low percentages, which inevitably means we're going to get these games where there's never procs, and you're going to sit there and rage, and then, you know, when <laughs> the opponent has Mort, it's going to, like, proc every single time. I mean, this can only be every other turn, but still, you know, if this procs every other turn, just, like, back to back to back to back, like, that's going to be very frustrating to play against. Interesting, though. I think that uh, this is very strong. You know, crit critical hit resistance is another RNG thing, but when it works, it dramatically decreases the amount of damage you're taking. And not everybody is bringing Dain into fights these days, so I think this is a strong ability. All right, next up we have his artifact, Ancient Dragon's Legacy. It looks like it just has innate crit chance. Uh, increase by 15%, so that's an fee a free 15% crit chance if you want that. That'll make it easy, even easier to build, you know, for uh, new players especially that are still working on getting ideal gear. After the caster uses a non-attack skill, so that's going to be his passive ability, has a 100% chance at max level to increase critical hit damage for two turns. So that would be the critical hit damage buff, which is, I believe, 50% crit damage. So this is basically just a stat stick, and you have to have a non-attack skill to use it. Hmm. Interesting. I think this artifact could be strong on him. You know, giving even more crit chance is always welcome, makes him easier to build. Although not really necessary, like once you get to endgame, like you should be able to build units without artifacts that give crit chance. The increased critical hit damage, also very nice. You know, you could really tune him uh, to have gear that has like really high HP and defense, for example, and speed, and forego a little bit of crit chance and crit damage, you know, and have this artifact fill in the holes, and just have a very like stat heavy bruiser. So I think it could be solid for sure. I think there are other artifacts that might be better. I mean, we don't have his multipliers yet, so we won't know for sure exactly how he works, but I think that Elbrus, for example, could be incredibly strong on him. You have to really like think with Elbrus, every time he gets an Elbrus proc, that's a chance for him to defense break somebody for two turns and for him to proc his passive, buffing your entire team and giving him a speed buff. I mean, that's got to be a really good contender for, you know, his best artifact would be Elbrus. Uh, I think this could be good as well. So I wouldn't be too upset if I pull a copy or two on the way to pity, since I'm sure I'll pity him, but I think that Elbrus will probably be better. So we can go ahead and take a look at how we could potentially build more, even though we don't have the multipliers, just to get a general idea of what 
you know, a, a potential build might look like. Alrighty, let's go find Charles here. Since he has the same stat lines, we can just use him as a template. Oh, just passed him. Okay, so don't have a 30 Elbrus on him. He has triple S though, so we could see how we, you know, might build Mort with a triple S. Let me take off his exclusive equipment just so we can get an idea, you know, what we're doing since Mort won't get access to that. I've had to move some of Charles' better gear around, unfortunately, just to other units because I only really ever use them on GVG defense. Okay, so I think I have some bruiser gear sitting on Chu, so we can find that. Uh, let me see, if we just put health here, we can probably locate it pretty quickly. So we have this weapon here, rolled pretty well. This helm also rolled well. Not a ton of speed, but good everything else. Um, I don't think I had a chest piece on her, so let's just pick a random immunity chest. Uh, this one's fine, just to get, you know, this has a lot of speed on it, which is nice. And let me see, we want critical hit damage. Chu had this one. Not the most amazing neck, let's see, it's 30, 35, uh, 42, plus a few extra percentage points there, so this neck's kind of mediocre, but it's alright, we're just throwing some stuff on to get an idea. Uh, we can do health, I don't think I wanted to use Chu's ring because it has so much crit. Uh, we can just grab Lilius's here. This has uh, decent speed defense and crit, again it's not, you know, like a super amazing ring, but it's it rolled decently. And let's see, who did I who did I use for the boots? Was it just choose boots? How much crit chance do I need? I only need four more percent crit. I could put choose on here just to get an idea. Alright, I mean so this is okay. Yeah, so okay, looking at this, we're a teeny bit over capped on crit chance here. But my Charles is triple S and I don't think my Mort will be triple S out the gate for sure. Uh, 269 crit damage is pretty decent, 213 speed is nice, he's very tanky at 18k and almost 1500 defense and you know pretty miserably uh, bad attack there. Uh, we don't know his multipliers yet so we really have no idea if this is going to be like even a good build on him but you know you saw the gear that I put on him, most of this gear is pretty decent so this is kind of a sample stat line just you know to work around in your head uh, of what would be possible for him. So, you know, you could sacrifice some speed and get more crit damage, or you could sacrifice, you know, some HP and get uh, more crit damage, something like that, you know, if his uh, HP scaling isn't great. I think this would be a pretty decent build, though. I think you do want a fair bit of speed on him, because he is getting that 10% buff, and then he's also getting the actual speed buff from his, you know, skill 2. So having a decent speed, probably at least 200, is going to really let you take advantage of that, and he'll be lapping around pretty quick. And him doing laps is going to be important, because if you remember his uh, passive, the one that procs that you know buff for everybody, can only be activate every other turn. So you want him turn cycling to kind of reset that and take advantage of that procking as much as possible. Um, this is a, a nice tanky stat line here. You know, my Charles has less than this, and he survives just fine. So I think this is plenty HP and defense. Maybe his crit chance should be higher. So you could maybe sacrifice some bulk for, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant crit damage. Could be higher, you know, just to do more damage. But here, it's a sample build. I think it'll be a good jumping off point. Um, I'm curious how you guys are planning on building him. Uh, since the multipliers aren't out yet, you may not know, but they should be out soon after the patch. And once those are out, we can maybe theorycraft a little bit more with him. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Later.